Hello, everybody. My name is Liliana. And hi, everyone. My name is Kelly. And we're from San Mateo County Libraries. Today, oh. we're going to be leading you through a really fun STEAM activity called Sounds of Friction. Yes, welcome everyone to this uh, video, this virtual program. We're going to have lots of videos this summer, but today we're going to be experimenting with two different types of homemade instruments, and we're going to be experimenting with force and friction to create different sounds. So let's go ahead and go over our vocabulary terms for today. Our first word is force. And a force is a push or a pull that causes a change of motion in an object. And the first option or first example that came to my mind was, you know, when we open a door or close a door, oftentimes we have to either push a door to open it, and sometimes we push it to close it, or you might also pull that door open or maybe even pull it closed for that matter. So that's our first word, force. Our next term is friction. Now friction is the action of one surface or object rubbing against another. And a good e simple example using our bodies, we can create some friction right here. By rubbing our hands together, we're creating friction. You can really feel that friction. I don't know about you, but my hands are starting to feel kind of warm as I'm creating this friction. Mine too. Now Liliana's got another vocabulary word for us today. Yes, and that word is vibrations. So go ahead and say that with me. Vibrations. Mm -hmm. Very good. So vibrations in, are when things are moving very quickly, either back and forth or up and down. These are vibrations. And you might even be able to see my hands kind of doing a vibrating motion. Um, if you put your hand on your throat, you can feel some vibrations there when you talk or when you make a sound. And that is how we hear the sound, is through those vibrations. So I'm going to teach you a very simple song to help you remember that sound is made of vibrations. And it goes like this. Sound is made of vibrations, vibrations, vibrations. Sound is made of vibrations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can feel, <laughs> yeah, and you can really feel all of those vibrations in there as you're humming. So try that really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cool. And now sing the song with me. Here we go. Sound is made of vibrations, vibrations, vibrations. Sound is made of vibrations. Mm -hmm. So I had cool. to sing a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us. Good job, everybody. And um, so now we're just going to jump into our very first instrument called a kazoo. So I've got one that I've already made. It looks like this. This is a kazoo. And a kazoo works um, off of vibrations. So we're really gonna get to experiment and learn more about vi vibrations by playing our kazoo today. Um, so let me show you what you're going to need to make the kazoo. First, you are going to need a toilet paper tube. So here's mine. Um, hopefully you've got a couple of these at home. If you don't have one yet, um, you can maybe make a tube out of a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard, uh, like a, a cereal box. You can just roll it up into a little tube and tape the ends together. Then you will also need some tissue paper. So I've got some here. Um, I have two different kinds. You can see one of them has a pattern on it. That's totally okay. It's, um, it's, it's still going to work for your kazoo. Um, you can also see that one of my tissue papers is pretty crinkly, so don't worry if your paper is very crinkly and it's not smooth, it's still going to work just fine. Then you're also going to need a rubber band. So I've got one here, and again, it could be any kind of rubber band. The kazoo I made earlier has a thicker um, and different color band from the one I'm going to use right now. 
So any kind of rubber band works. Finally, sorry, I've still got a few more. Then you're going to need some markers. And I've got thin markers, I've got some thicker markers, and I also have crayons. Um, pretty much anything that colors on paper you can use to decorate your kazoo. Then you're going to need some scissors for cutting the tissue paper. And finally, you're going to need a sharp object like a pen or a pencil to poke a hole into your kazoo like this. This is a hole right here. Um, so you can see I've got two different kinds of pencils. One is a little bit thicker, one is a little bit thinner. Either one will work, a pen will work, anything else that's sharp um, that you can use to make a hole safely in your kazoo. Okay, so let's get started. All right, first step is to decorate your kazoo, decorate the tube. So you're gonna color straight onto your tube. You're gonna draw any design that you like. You can see that on the one I made earlier, I drew some flowers. And this is because I really love plants and I really love flowers. Um, but draw anything that, that you like. So maybe if you really like dinosaurs or cupcakes um, or birds, whatever it is that, that you want to put on your kazoo, take some time to decorate it first. Um, be creative. Then, when you're done decorating your tube, um, pick up one of your pieces of tissue paper, and we're just gonna experiment with it a little bit before we put it onto our instrument. So take the piece of paper and try rubbing it together and just listen to what, what it sounds like and pay attention to what it feels like. Let's try that. Rub it together. Ooh, and I noticed that we're creating some friction here because we're rubbing the pieces together. Pretty cool. Next, take your tissue paper and crumple it up. And then uncrumple it. Crumple it up. And then uncrumple it. And I just noticed that when we crumple it, we're applying a force. We're pushing pushing all that paper together and using the force of our hands to crumple it. And then when we're uh, pulling it apart, we're kind of, it's a pull. So we're always using lots of different forces all around us. Finally, take your piece of tissue paper and just wave it through the air. What do you notice? Hmm. We notice that it makes a really soft sound and it also moves very smoothly through the air, just flows really nicely. So, lots of different uh, fun things we can notice just with our tissue paper. All right, so going back to the kazoo now, the next step after you've decorated is to take a piece of paper, take some tissue paper. I'm, I'm starting off with just two sheets, two layers, and you're going to cut out a square. So you're going to cut it a little bit bigger than the opening of your tube. So we can see tube kind of goes about there. So I'm going to cut a square a little bigger than that. So take your scissors and just cut, cut, cut until you have a square. Okay. Then, you're going to put your square over the opening and you're just going to press the sides of the paper down, just like that, so that it covers the opening. Then, you're going to take your rubber band and use it to secure the paper, hold the tissue paper in place over the tube. But, there's one thing I want you to remember here is to leave a little bit of wiggle room. That means put your rubber band on, but don't do it too, too tight. I'm gonna lift mine up just a little bit so that my tissue paper has some room to vibrate and move, because that's what's gonna create the really cool sound in our kazoo. So just remember not to make it too tight. 
when you put rubber bands on. Next is making the hole. So you're gonna take your pencil or your pen or anything else you're using, and you're gonna go about halfway up the tube, um, and you're going to make a hole with your instrument. So I'm gonna press mine into the tube and I might wiggle it around a little bit like this, but I'm gonna do it on the table so that I have a flat surface and I can apply more force. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. You're gonna be really careful um, to keep your other hand away from that hole so that you don't poke yourself. And if you need some help making a hole, um, definitely ask someone at home to help you because you wanna make sure that you make this hole safely and that you don't hurt your hand. So there we go, hopefully you heard that. So the pencil popped through and I'm just gonna squeeze it in there a little bit more, make my hole nice and big, take it out, and there we go. We have a hole. All right, and that's it. Your kazoo is now ready to play. So a kazoo is really cool because um, you, you can either hum or sing into the opening of the tube, and when you do, um, you're gonna notice how it sounds based on the vibrations that the tissue paper is creating. So I'm gonna play mine, you can play yours too, and let's, let's notice um, what we hear and what it sounds like. So here we go. Wow, that sounded so cool. So I can kind of hear a little bit of a vibration, um, a little, it, it makes the sound louder than if I were to just hum, right? If I'm just using my regular voice, Ba, 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 ba. But if I blow into my kazoo, ba, 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 it really changes the sound of my voice, or the sound of the air coming out of my, my voice. Um, so you can experiment with this now um, by applying different types of force, meaning changing how hard or how soft we sing or hum into our kazoo. So you can try applying more force by singing louder. And then try applying less force by singing softer. And just pay attention and observe to what you notice when that happens. Yeah, um, so really, really cool. And um, one thing we wanna really um, know about how the kazoo works is that when we the air that we hum or sing into it is causing these layers of tissue paper to rub against each other and vibrate. So that is creating the sound. Um, and the sound is gonna change depending on how much force we apply. So again, whether you hum or sing harder or softer, it will change the sound. So very fun instrument. You can have fun singing around your house with your kazoo. Awesome. Thank you, Liliana, for teaching us how to make that kazoo. I can't wait to make one, too. But I also want to share with you all another instrument that you can make at home, uh, which is called a rain stick. Now, the rain stick actually has its origins. That's like where it came from, right? Uh, in South America, in Chile, the indigenous people, the Mapuche, actually invented the uh, rain stick to encourage rain in their environments, right? Um, and today rain sticks are used um, in a lot of different ways and certainly for us, we're gonna be uh, using it to explore force and friction just like we did with the kazoo. So for this, you're going to need a, a tube of some kind. Now, uh, a paper towel tube is a little bit longer. That works really well. I have here uh, something similar to a paper towel, uh, actually more like a toilet, toilet paper tube like we used for the kazoo. Um, so you can use toilet paper tubes, um, you can use paper towel tubes, you could actually even use um, if you have some kind of plastic or paper cup that's a little bit longer or taller, that would work well too for our rain stick. You're also going to need some tape. 
I have some colored tape here. Uh, masking tape works really well. Um, you'll also need some paper and you can use colored paper, you can use newspaper, all kinds of paper will work for this. Um, and then finally, you're gonna need some material to put inside of your rain stick. Um, so I have a few examples here. I have some black beans which you can hear. <laughs> in here I have some rice and in this container I actually don't remember what this is but it's a type of grain that you can cook and eat like oatmeal. And already I'm, I'm hearing some sounds as I apply some force. I'm shaking the, the container and those beans are hitting the the plastic, right? All right, so let's figure out how we can put this all together to make a rain stick. So I've got my tube here. The first thing we want to do is cover up one end of the tube so that uh, we can start filling up the rain stick. So this is kind of similar to the kazoo we just made, but we're not going to use tissue paper. I have here, this is like a computer paper. It's a little more durable, so we want to, you know, we don't want the beans to fall out of our tube. Or maybe we do, I don't know. So essentially you're gonna do similar to the kazoo. You're gonna cover up one end of the uh, tube here and then I'm gonna use tape to hold it down and put it in place. The kazoo we use a rubber band, but for this we really want it to, to stay. So I'm gonna try to tape it tightly. Ooh. And you can use as much tape as you need our goal here is we're trying to keep the keep this end closed, right? So I think uh, I got it on there pretty tight. I can even look inside my tube <laughs> and check and make sure there's no holes, make sure uh, there's no, you know, I don't see any light coming through. All right, so the next step now that we have one end covered is that we're going to uh, start putting some of those materials into the tube. Before I do that, actually, um, you can, uh, if you want to experiment a little more with uh, some friction that you can create inside of your tube, you can take a piece of paper, crumple it up, crumple there, and then I'm just going to stick that down inside of my tube. And that way, when I start putting material inside of here, it's probably going to hit that purple paper in there, I think. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so now a tip for... Uh, making a little bit less of a mess. So messes, you know, I think messes are a great sign of, you know, fun and learning. If we make messes, that must mean something's going good. Um, but if you want to make a funnel, um, this is a type of funnel, a funnel will help you to pour that material into the, the tube without, you know, spilling it all over the floor. Although I've done that too. Um, so here I've created a funnel. This was actually a, uh, plastic bottle that had some grape soda in it actually. Um, and I cut the bottle and if you flip it upside down there, it makes an excellent funnel. But if you don't have a bottle, you can also, with just a simple sheet of paper, you can roll that paper kind of into a cone shape, sort of like that. So you can experiment with the rolling. And then I would stick that cone into my tube and very similar to the bottle, it creates a nice, uh, a nice path there for the uh, materials to just go right into the tube, which is where I want them to be. So I'm going to use the clear, uh, my bottle, just so you can see a little bit as I'm pouring uh, my material in here. Now this part's really fun because you get to choose how much you want to put inside of your rain stick. Now my rain stick's pretty short, so I probably don't want to fill like the whole thing up, but I don't know, at the same time I could. There's so many options, so you get to choose. Um, but I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna put a little bit of each uh, material that I have here inside. So I've got my rice, and let's let's listen as we hear the force of the rice hitting what's inside of the uh, the friction, the sounds it's gonna make, right? Ooh, I like the sound of the rice. All right, so let's listen for some more sounds of friction, right? Our beans are going to be hitting the inside of what's inside of my tube here, right? Some paper and some rice. I had to shake it a little bit. I had to create some more force. Uh, and as I made that force, I also created friction. Ah, it's getting kind of full in here, but I think I'll add a little bit more. 
I don't know if you can tell, uh, it's probably, I'm not sure if you can hear the difference, but to me, these all sound a little bit different. Um, so it's kind of fun to experiment with just the way that different materials sound as well. All right, so I've got, I think I filled it up about halfway there. I think that's good for, for what I want to do today. But we are not done yet because if I want to use this, there's a big open hole down here. How am I going to close that up? Oh, I bet I could do what I did on this end, right? Just like we did with the kazoo. And as we started our rain stick, get another piece of paper, make sure it fits, that it covers the whole circle there, right? And then once I have that on there, I'll get some more tape. And tape that up. Nice and secure. Ooh, yeah. Now you could stop here and simply continue making music, create some rhythm. Ooh. I can hear as I apply force, I'm the one making this move, right? I hear that friction inside, those beans and rice hitting each other. Also, I can move it slow. I can move it fast, so you can experiment in so many different ways. One final note about our rain stick here. Another option um, to finish it off, um, it's kind of rough on the outside at the moment, um, but you could actually, with a piece of paper, roll the whole thing together, put some tape on there, and then you have sort of a nice uh, surface that you could, you know, grab some markers, you could draw on there, decorate your ring stick. There's so many possibilities. So I hope you have a lot of fun experimenting, um, you know, with the different types of materials you put in here, playing around with force and friction, creating some beautiful music with your, with your rhythms. So, of course yeah. you can make all kinds of other instruments. Um, you can even teach a friend uh, or a family member how to make these instruments too. Definitely. So cool. That rain stick sounds really neat. I love all those different sounds. Um, so one other experiment that you could do with your kazoo is to try changing the amount of tissue paper that you have on the end of it. Um, see what happens when you add some more. What happens when you add more than two layers of tissue paper? Does that change the sound? I don't know. Try it out and see what happens. Um, and you can also experiment by maybe changing the angle that you're blowing or humming into your tube. What happens if you don't blow directly, but maybe a little lower or a little higher? Try it out and just have fun um, experimenting and playing with your instruments. Like Kelly said, teach somebody at home. Maybe everyone in your family can learn how to make a kazoo and a ring stick. And then you can start a band or put on a concert and just have lots of fun. Uh, so today we want to sing and play a song together with you using our instruments. And yeah, so you've probably heard this song before. It's called If You're Happy and You Know It. And we have some special verses for the song today. So I'm going to start us off and uh, thank you all for joining us. And let's get our song going. Here we go. If you're happy and you know it, shake your rain stick. If you're happy and you know it, shake your rain stick. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shake your rain stick. If you're happy and you know it, play your kazoo. If you're happy and you know it, play your kazoo. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, play your kazoo. If you're happy and you know it, feel the vibration. Mm. If you're happy and you know it, feel the vibration. Mm. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, feel the vibration. Mm. If you're happy and you know it, create some friction. If you're happy and you know it, create some friction. 
If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, create some friction. If you're happy and you know it, wave goodbye. Goodbye. If you're happy and you know it, wave goodbye. Goodbye. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wave goodbye. Goodbye. So thank you for joining us. Remember to share what you've learned, share what you've created. We love to share our ideas and I hope you'll share yours too. And don't forget to join our summer learning challenge where you can earn a chance to win a thousand dollar scholarship. So you can find out more details and sign up at www.summerlearners.org and yes thank you and one last note if you want to share uh, what you've created with us you can tag us on social media at smco libraries with the hashtag smco creates thank you for joining us we hope you have an excellent summer and we'll see you next time bye